Welcome to the Sharon Jones Show, where we're keeping up with the Joneses. And now here's your host, Sharon Jones. Welcome to the Sharon Jones Show. We have a live show for you today, and I am so excited because God is moving in a way that I cannot describe, and I thank Him. Today, I have on set Pastor Reggie Williams with South Columbus Methodist uh, United Church. I also have the lovely, the vivacious Kenyatta Jones with Through the Fire Ministries, and I have the awesome wompreneur, Mrs. Latanya Tibb. So you guys don't do anything, don't touch that dial. We'll be right back in just a minute. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Welcome to the Sharon Jones Show. Today I have a great show lined up for you. I have Pastor Reggie Williams with me from South Columbus Methodist Church. I tell you, it is a blessing to have you here on set with me. Thank you, Sharon. It's my, it's my pleasure. I'm yeah. glad to be here. All right. Long time coming. Yes, <laughs> definitely. So tell me about all the great things of the South Columbus Methodist Church, Pastor. Well, well first of all, I want people to know that South Columbus United Methodist Church is not your grandmama's Methodist Church. All right. Okay. <laughs> I like that. <clears throat> yes. So I know a lot of times people see the cross and flame and they get these ideas of what, what a worship experience is like at South Columbus. They may think it's boring, it's dull. Wow. It is the, ex it, the, uh, it's the opposite. And I like to call it worship on steroids. Oh, yeah. Yes. I like that. We I have like a great that. Time. I think the audience yeah. likes that. And we have a great time, and people come there. I mean, they say that we are Metha, Baptist, Costal, you know, they try to put yeah. in all of those names <laughs> because it's not the typical United Methodist Church. And so, uh, but, but it is the place uh, where we like to say the place where the best is yet to come. All right. And our, our vision statement is that we are growing church, connecting people to a loving God. Mm, my Lord, Amen. my Lord, my Lord, I tell you. I have had the opportunity, praise God, to come and worship with you guys yes, in the past. Right. And everything that you're saying, I concur with you because it is awesome experience. Wonderful. I'm glad you yeah. feel that way. Tell us where you're located. We are at 1213 Benning Drive, which is off of Victory Drive, which is where the new Walmart is down oh, yeah. in South Columbus. <laughs> so, yeah, we're up from Baker Middle School uh -huh. and uh, Dartha High Elementary School, across okay. from... Uh, a bunch of apartment complexes, and so it's, it's in a great location. Wonderful, wonderful. Now tell me, you don't look like a Columbusian, so where are you from? <laughs> 90 miles from here, Macon, Georgia. Macon, Georgia. Mactown. Go Macon. Home of Otis Redding, Jr. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. I was wondering, I didn't smell no Columbus when you stepped in the room. <laughs> what does Columbus smell like? Uh, it smell, I can't tell you, but uh, I know what it is. <laughs> I thought for certain. <laughs> I, and all this time, I'm thinking it's it's getting on me. So uh, apparently not. No, it's I have a little right. bit. I have a little bit more to go. Okay. Yeah, you got a little bit more okay, to go, but gotcha. you got to get there okay. because people. We're gonna invite the people to come out, yes. and that's why we're here. We're, we're definitely telling them what you're doing, mm -hmm. how you're doing it, and where can they come to get that awesome experience that you stated earlier. Yes. So yes, I'm sure that the viewers would like to come and check it out because we all are curious people. Yes, We'd right. like to know, mm -hmm. inquiring minds. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me tell you, when you come. <laughs> 
There are some things that we guarantee what you can expect when you come to South Columbus. Number one, to be loved by All everybody. Right. We I need mean, that love, Pastor. I, uh, I, I make it a habit, especially young men who come there to take them out to lunch, just to, just to inquire with them. Tell me, what, what, it, what was it about South Columbus that, that brought you here, that keeps you here? All right. And so generally people, I, I'm expecting because uh -huh. of my little frail ego, mm. I expect people <laughs> to say, oh, the preaching is wonderful. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I expect them to say, you know, the music is great. Uh. But you know what they say, this, this young man told me, he says, you know, the number one thing is that people made me feel love when I came there. Oh, God. And I think that is, uh, that's a great compliment. And so, so yeah. you could expect that, first of all, to be loved. You could expect to be greeted, uh, mm, that's cared true. for. Yes. You can expect a great worship experience musically. Yes. Uh, and I, I would say some decent preaching. Now, right. I, I think it's good preaching. Yeah, I can say that too. Yeah. <laughs> I can say that too. And, you know, you come as you are. I mean, you know. All right. We, we have people that are dressed to the nine. Oh, yeah. I see that. And then we have people that are just totally dressed down. So, you know, we too. don't, we, we, there's no judgment. <laughs> just right. Jesus. Yeah, just some Jesus. Just Jesus. Uh, mm -hmm. That's more than enough. Yeah. Amen. Now, tell me about your community involvements with your uh, church family. Yeah. Well, we, we uh, you know, South Columbus is, South Columbus Methodist Church is a staple in that community. Uh -huh. and, and not just in the South Columbus area, but throughout Columbus. Uh, I was fortunate enough to come to a church that is already well established, wow. uh, uh, where uh, the late jo Joseph Robinson has done a lot of work there. And so I stand on his shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, but we do a lot of, we do a lot of things, you know, in the, in the community every day. I have people come because, I mean, people are having a difficult time. Mm -hmm. So every day people, people come there to get food from us. Mm -hmm. They come there to get financial help from us, and we help as much as we can. I, I was just so blessed. As a matter of fact, before I came up here, our finance guy said, Pastor, come, I want to show you something. Wow. And so he took me back to the food pantry that we have at the, at yeah. the church, and it is stocked. Uh-oh. Yeah. My little Amen. truck will be over there tomorrow. <laughs> Feed the hungry, Listen, not the homeless. As, as blessed as you are, we, we expect for you to bring some food. Oh, over bring there. it. I'm supposed to go get it. <laughs> but that's one of the things we're doing. Yeah, uh, and, that's uh, wonderful. Another thing we do is that we do uh, some tutoring for uh -huh. kids that, that go to school in that area. Oh, my. Uh, that's every, awesome. I think, Tuesdays and no, Wednesdays, I think every Wednesdays. We do tutoring, um, wow. and we have mentor programs. Mm. Uh, we have other small group programs. We have a good ladies, a women's ministry, uh, working on a good men's ministry. Right. We have a great Bible study. Yeah, I like preaching. Uh huh. I love, love teaching. teaching. Yes. I knew it. Yes. you definitely are a teacher. Yeah, so I applaud you for that. Thank you, thank yeah. you. So anyway, we we have a lot going on there. We do a lot in the in the community, and people know about South Columbus because of the work that we do. So. Okay, so what time do you start to air at your church? Thank you so much. Uh -huh. uh, we have uh, two services, 8.15 mm -hmm. and 11. All right. So if you like to come and get your worship on, uh -huh. come to the 8.15 service. Wow. I always tell people, if I weren't pastoring the church, I would go to the 8.15 service, uh -huh. especially during football season. Oh, my. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Need to get him his and go ahead. That's on. right. Like but it. now that the season's over, you know, my depression is beginning to lift a little bit. That's awesome. Uh, but, but yeah, 815 and then we have 11 o'clock service. 11 o'clock. Yeah. We're going to visit you again. Yeah, you guys keep it, it locked it. right here with the Joneses. Don't go nowhere. Y'all know. Uh, what's that, Jeff? <laughs> There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Are your children in the right car seat for their age and size? Is the seat supposed to be forward facing or rear facing? Did they move to a booster seat too soon? It may be too late to check when you're on the road. Fortunately, you're on the couch. 
car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Don't think you know. Know you know. Okay, so we drowned the fire. Yep. Stirred it. Mm -hmm. Drowned it again. Mm -hmm. And now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Welcome back to the Sharon Jones Show. I had such an awesome time with Pastor Reggie Williams, and also I have a woman of God sitting on set with me right now, and she is a awesome Christian dancer. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you, Miss Sharon? I am doing awesome. Through the Fire Ministry, tell me about you and Through the Fire Ministry. Well, Through the Fire Ministry is a very unique ministry because we just don't have a dance and we also go out and teach worship and we're able to partner with different churches and help them with their dance ministries and we also teach the Word of God as well. Okay, that's awesome. Yes, ma'am. You're such a young, vibrant, beautiful young lady. Thank you. And I thank God for meeting you because I had the opportunity of seeing you dance down at the Trade Center. Yes, and I mean, there was tears when you got through dance and I felt like I wanted to do. <laughs> Amen. So when you can touch somebody with your spiritual gift of moving, yes, that is an awesome feeling that people can get just from you. I tell you, you never thought, you never knew that. <laughs> no, ma'am. Uh -huh. That's actually why I actually started teaching. I started teaching about two years ago, um, teaching what I do, because I met a lot of dancers that didn't have any biblical teaching on what they were doing, and they were getting up doing nice dances, but God wasn't anywhere in the program. Mm -hmm. Girl. So that was like the main thing of why I really started teaching and God really started giving me his heart on worship because I saw what was wrong and I wanted to be able to help others fix it. Wow, that's great. You know, that is something that if I had a little girl, I would definitely put them in there because I felt the spirit. You know, sometimes people sing and it's just empty. They sound okay, they sound good, but it's no, it's an emptiness. But some people can get up and sing or some people can get up and dance and you feel the Holy Spirit move. And like, if I had a daughter, I'd put her in there, no problem. <laughs> just write the check four or $5 and be through with it. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, what I actually realized, you know, traveling around dancing, that a lot of people didn't know why they were supposed to be dancing. Mm -hmm. As a worship leader, if you're singing or dancing, you're supposed to create an atmosphere of worship. That's yeah. your job. You're supposed to destroy the your people. <laughs> You're supposed to usher the people into worship. Yeah. And if you're That's unable to do it, you know, yes. because you don't know the purpose behind it uh. or you don't have a relationship with God or you don't know your word, because all of that is a big factor. Yes. And the way that I'm able to be so effective in ministry is my personal relationship with God and because Ooh. I study the word. Like yes. I actually would get in the word and find out, okay, this song comes from this scripture and this is what I'm supposed to wear because of this. And this is what God is saying during this song. So this is what I need to portray. So I really study in order to be able to minister and dance and I'm able to have a place now to where I can teach other little girls and other little boys what I do and it's just like planting seeds. Yes. We're able to go and we teach them a dance and we'll tell them well until you learn this scripture you won't be able to dance and they'll learn that scripture oh, wow. so they can dance awesome. or we'll say well in order for you to dance we're fasting and you have to give up your electronics and they do it without any you know without any grief because they really want to do that dance yes. so that's what we do at the academy yeah. we're able to put put them seeds in those little ones and really and they don't even understand what they're doing and why they're doing it but we're planting the seeds at yes. a very early age amen i love to see the seeds grow you yes, put them there amen. now tell me the age group of your uh, uh, openings for your well, we start at the age of five, and I have um, children of all races. I actually work with the all Hispanic ministry as well, and then mm. we go up to adults, so I teach adults as well. 
Okay. Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Do you teach full figure people? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not one of them. I'm just asking. I know. I know that's right. Else. I know that's right. Hey, uh, I'm only a six, you know. <laughs> this mine. Yeah, I'm a six, baby. So I understand. Uh, that don't apply to me now. Don't get it. Yeah, twist that. But I actually, at the academy, we actually have a class for people who just want to learn more about worship and actually really don't desire to dance. Wow. We actually have a class for people who just want to come and just learn more about worship. We have a class and we offer that as well and we do it every other Saturday. Okay, good. That's awesome. See, people need to know stuff like this. They're putting kids in this ballet. They're putting them in all kinds of stuff, uh, all this extra, you know, cheerleading and all that, which is great. But there are sometimes kids in homes that don't want to be a cheerleader. They don't want to be on the ball team. They don't want to be in the, the band. But this mm -hmm. is even opening something for all the children can have something out of yes, the family. Or, like you said, the adults to have something. Go from your husband. Have some me time. Go worship. Yes, go praise with you. Dance. Just get off. You know, I feel like it might get some of my frustration, all this stuff. Yes, you know? <laughs> I just be fighting so hard. I be dancing so hard, the pain probably just pop away. Yeah, that would happen. Yeah, I might have to tell me to slow down if I come down and have you doing it. But that's a blessing. Now, tell me, you have an event coming up. Yes, ma'am. On April 30th, we are having our first production, which is a recital slash play that we're putting on at the Activity Center in Phoenix City. It's a very dramatic and bold piece. Mm. It talks about um, this person, this evangelist who basically when you see someone on Sunday, you kind of see the, the outer shell of a person, but what happens when the lights go off? Mm. And you're able to really see the inside of this person's life. Ooh. We have a lot of dancing going on, a little singing, and then we have a pre-show as well. Wow. So we have a big event. Um, make sure you all come out. It's um, April 30th again, and the tickets are only $5, but it's an event for the whole family. Fill up for five. Yes. $5 fill up. That sounds yes. good. I think all the viewers should be down there. We yes. should the fire department to be there. be so many of us Because we want to see what y'all are doing as a group. Yes, ma'am. I see you individually. I, I definitely want to see you as a group. Yes, ma'am. What your group has learned. Because I bet you they are just so on fire. They're excited. Through the fire ministry. Yes, I love it. I love it. I love it. So I'm so glad that you come so they can get tickets on. You can, um, I actually have tickets for me today. Okay. And then um, you can go on Eventbrite and type in Consuming Fire and you're able to find them as well. Okay, great. You guys keep it locked. We'll be right back with the Joneses. <laughs> Taking care of a family member can lead to plenty of questions. Fortunately, there's a place to get the answers for them and for you. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Welcome back to the Sharon Jones Show. Was just talking to Kenyatta Jones about such great things she's doing, and I applaud her, and I'm applauding you because you're on set with me right now. Yes. Latanya Tibbs, how you doing? I'm great, thank you for having me. Yes, yes, yes. I 
I'm seriously looking at you a whole different way <laughs> because when I first met you, I kind of like, well, I really don't want to hear about that. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's nice, she's sweet, she cute. But uh, I really don't want to hear about no wound. Exactly. And I started like, ugh. Mm -hmm. But you have brought so much light to me. And I thank, thank God for you. you being on set with me today. So you can share some of what you do, yes. why you do it. I just want you to talk. Well, first of all, I, I accepted the call that God had for me. And that's to educate women, especially women of color. Okay. I'm actually opening up what's called a womb Panua boutique here in Columbus, Georgia. So I'm very excited for that. Yes, God. Um, because here's the thing, you guys. Every single year, over 600,000 unnecessary hysterectomies are performed on women of color. We're dying from fibroids. We're dying for breast cancer. And it's all because of your Feniman hygiene products. What you fail to realize, if I ask you to pour bleach on your womb, you would look at me like I was crazy. But every month that you go into the store and buy your products, anywhere from your shampoos to, to your deodorant, even down to your toilet paper. Because see here, this is an unbleached toilet paper. Toilet paper starts off this way. But what you fail to realize is every time you come in contact with toilet paper or your regular vitamin hygiene products, you're coming in contact with bleach. And so our wounds, it's an all out attack. And what we fail to realize is that it's a billion dollar industry. And a little over a year ago, the youngest young lady I've met um, she was 19 years old, getting ready to get a full hysterectomy. So when God gave me the call, I took the call because I see I get to travel all over the world. And it's amazing that all the stuff that the women outside the United States, they don't understand fibroids. They don't understand cancer. And I said, okay, God, you're going to have to show me what is the difference between outside the United States and inside. All of our food, toxic. It's toxic. And so the sad part about that, I remember being a young girl, and I remember my grandmother telling me, go out in the back and get food, go get the, uh, the cabbage and all that. We got to go back to our roots. Yeah. And we have got to start, you know, we have got to go back and heal our children mm -hmm. in our cupboard. Everything you need from garlic to uh, aloe vera plant. I know you guys are very familiar with aloe vera plant. Yes. And it heals the body in a hundred different ways. Yes. I'm on an all out mission to save as many wounds as possible. Yeah. Ladies, I'm going to tell you, here's the trick. We go into the store, the package is pretty, uh -huh. we pop the top, we smell it, and we buy it. What you fail to realize, Wikipedia is our friend, Google is our friend. You have your phone with you every time you go shop. If you would Google the first two ingredients in anything that you buy, I guarantee you it's going to show you direct link to cancer. <laughs> direct link. It's a billion dollar industry, but I'm so blessed because I'm not going to offer all of this information about problems and not have a solution. God gave me a formula in a dream. Uh, for a holistic line of products. So what you can find at the Wombpreneur, we sell all organic tampons and pads, panty liners. We have a service that's called the V-Stain. I'm sure some of you ladies have seen this mm -hmm. on all the reality I stores. Want one. Where it's now in Columbus, because yeah. I do it full time, but here's the difference. The difference between me and somewhere else is that I customize every stain. So no two people get the same thing. Why? Because your womb has been through something totally different than someone else's womb. And it's, it's only God led. And so I take one client at a time. And I've seen so many life changing things that have happened to women. And here's the, here's the other thing. I'm just going to be real because that's all I know. Okay. Ladies, soul ties, they real. Soul ties are real. Now, this is something that they're probably not going to teach you in the church, so I'm going to go ahead and be the street preacher. All right, street. Go if street. you have not catered to your womb, uh -huh. 
do know every person you've actually been intimate with, spirit still lives in your womb. So now your husband got to battle with all the other spirits. So please come see me so we can cleanse and detox. Here's another thing, ladies. Please be mindful, your daughters. We have got to change our products. Now the big box stores are not going to tell you about the organic products. You're not going to see a commercial on TV because they've been trying to keep it on the down low for a very long time. Well, God done put me on the scene. I've been on Dr. Oz. I'm actually, I went on Steve Harvey's show in October. Um, I have another product that's on Bedroom Candy, which is Candy Bears of Real Housewives of Atlanta. So God is opening some national doors. Ladies, please follow me. I will be opening up uh, the end of this month. And I can tell you this, I've seen ladies that doctors have written them off, say they can't have children because of infertility problems. When they come see me, trust me, I've been through baby showers and all different types of things. Come see me, I'm right by the Azales Cat Fish Place, right across the street from it. Thank you. Keep it locked. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's the head. Next week, same place, same time. Keep it locked with the Joneses. Mm. Love you. Thank you for watching today's show. If you would like additional information about today's show, call or email us. So we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Are your children in the right car seat for their age and size? Is the seat supposed to be forward-facing or rear-facing? Did they move to a booster seat too soon? It may be too late to check when you're on the road. Fortunately, you're on the couch. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Don't think you know. Know you know.